What do coal, hydroflask, scrunchies, and North Korea have to do with each other? You might be thinking coal mining North Korean visco girls, but you're wrong. It's Fjallraven backpacks. This video was originally going to be a comparison between the real deal Fjallraven backpack versus the knockoff because I'd seen these backpacks around and one day someone told me how much they were and I was just blown away by how much people could spend on a backpack, especially like a little school backpack. So I wanted to kind of dig into it and see if the knockoff was just as good as the real deal. And when I started researching it, I came across a word that I'd never seen before and it was vinyl on. And I know like a fair amount of like materials and textile and, and I'd never seen that before. And so I started digging into it and there's actually a really unique story behind it and it has some really cool properties. So I wanna put this fabric to the test to see if it lives up to the hype or if it's just another case of uh, Swedish marketing that a lot of young people seem to be especially susceptible to. And if you like this video and you wanna see some more and the comparison between these two, consider liking and subscribing because it makes a huge difference in the channel and it helps me get sponsors to pay for really pricey backpacks to cut apart like Audible, they sponsored this video, so shout out to Audible. So what is vinyl on? In the words of Fjallraven, or however you say it, is a hard-wearing material that withstands the test of time. They've been using it in their backpacks since the late 70s. Vinyl on is lighter than wool and cotton. Um, it's really, really abrasion resistant. It's supposed to be more abrasion resistant than cotton, so we'll put that to the test later in the video to see if it really is. And the really cool thing I like about this is it doesn't rot and it's, it's not as susceptible to mold and insects aren't gonna eat it because it's a, because it's a synthetic material. And uh, now let's actually test this material and see if it holds up. Looks like Toaster's chosen the knockoff brand bag though. In order to test this fabric, we need some swatches. So we're gonna cut this pocket off. This go girls hang in there, it's for science. And we're gonna make little swatches out of it and compare it to a wax canvas and a regular canvas in three ways. First one being, how does it do against fire? Does it burn? Um, second, how abrasion resistant is it and how does it wear? And third, how tear proof is it? So, let's cut the pocket off this. Okay, we got our three swatches of the vinyl on, three swatches of the wax canvas, and the three swatches of the, just the regular cotton canvas. So the first test we're gonna do is the burn test. This is the one I'm really curious about, so let's, let's do this one first. So res results of the burn test. So we did the, the just the regular cotton canvas first. It didn't really react to the flame because it's cotton, it doesn't really have anything that's gonna shrink or shrivel. Um, as soon as I did start touching the flame, it was self extinguishing. It would start to light and then go out and light and go out. And even when I had the whole thing on fire, it kind of burned itself out and I was left with a little bit of fabric left. It's like a charcoal charred fabric. It didn't burn all the way to ashes. The wax canvas, this didn't really react to the heat either when I put it up next to the, to the flame. You could see kind of the wax melting and boiling a little bit. But then once I touched the flame, the whole thing started to go up. It was surprisingly flammable. It burned all the way to just ashes. It was nothing but just little, basically just ashes. So that was kind of an interesting difference between the, the, the canvas and the wax canvas. And then the vinyl on. So this stuff was actually surprising because I thought when I put it up to the flame, it would start shriveling kind of like a polyester, but it didn't really react to the flame at all. And when it would start touching the flames, it would start curling back, but it wasn't igniting. But once I did stick into the fire and it started actually igniting, it went up pretty easily and was pretty flammable. And it didn't burn straight to ashes like the cottons did. This one did what most synthetic fabrics do and it started to kind of bubble and become sticky and and um, become that tarish kind of gross, flammable, nasty stuff. So now let's do the abrasion test. For the abrasion test, 
Um, I'm just gonna take those little those little swatches and put even pressure on my burnishing machine that has a little sanding drum and see how long it takes to sand all the way through. So let's do the abrasion test. Okay, results of the abrasion test. This one was really, this one was really interesting. So the cotton canvas, this lasted surprisingly long. It was about 40 seconds on the sanding wheel before it finally gave way. And then the wax canvas only lasted half that time. So it only lasted 20 seconds. And then the vinyl on. So I thought for sure this would be comparable to the others, but this lasted so long. This lasted a minute and 50 seconds. It took a lot of pressure. I would, like it would have lasted a lot longer, but I was getting sick of standing there and I was like, this video is gonna be a 20 minute video. So I was moving it around the sander, putting more pressure on it. This stuff, this stuff lasted so long. I'm super impressed by how abrasion resistant this is. I was not expecting there to be this big of a difference. And if you look at the bottom side of this fabric, it didn't lose its structural integrity once it started cutting through some of these um, fibers versus if you look at the back side of the wax canvas, as soon as you start losing some of that fiber, it started to come unraveled. Now let's go to the tear resistance test. Okay, tear results. So I cut the swatches in half and cut little nicks in it on different sides of the cloth because fabric is directional so it can sometimes affect the way it tears. And the cotton cloth tore pretty easily both times. Uh, both tore in the, in the same direction. The wax canvas, same story. Pretty easy to tear, both tore in the same direction. And then the vinyl on. This stuff was, this stuff was really hard to tear. I really had to um, pull on it as hard as I could to get it to tear. I, almost, I had to cut the second one a little bit more to get some more grip on it to tear it. But this stuff is really tear resistant. So that was surprising. I thought maybe it would be easier to tear because it's a smaller weave, but it was a lot harder to tear. So really interesting stuff. So overall, does the Wonder Fabric live up to all the hype? Yeah, I would say it does. This fabric is really impressive. I, uh, I did not think going into it that I'd like the fabric this much. It's really tear resistant, it's abrasion resistant, it's lightweight, it doesn't have that cold clammy feeling of wax canvas and it doesn't attract lint as much. Yeah, it's a really interesting fabric. It's a synthetic fabric so you get that gooey tar stuff if it, is, if it starts on fire, but how many backpacks have you had start on fire? You know, it's not the most scientific way to test the material. There's a lot of holes that people can poke in my little tests, but for an overall, a general feel for the fabric, I think this was a good test. So if you like this video, like and subscribe makes a huge difference. So now let's get to the actual history of it. Short Cliff Notes version of the history because it's kind of an interesting story. In 1937, DuPont, not a sponsor of this channel and the most hated thing in any of my comment sections. Yes, I've seen Blackwater. DuPont invents nylon. Nylon had a huge impact on the garment and textile industries, especially in Japan, where Japan's, some of their biggest exports were cotton and silk. So they were kind of on the hunt for their own synthetic material. And in 1939, two years after nylon was invented, Ri Sung Ji invents vinyl on. But a few years later, World War II happens and that kind of put the vinyl on on temporary hiatus. So in the, in the 50s, Ji defected to North Korea to hopefully fulfill his dream of making this material. The problem with North Korea was they don't really have much oil reserves and it was a petroleum based fabric. So he had to get a little creative with it. Two resources they do have in abundance there is limestone and coal or anthracite. So they used these two materials as the base to create vinyl on. Later, vinyl on would become the country's national fiber, which I, I guess is the thing for countries and they would coin it as the king of fibers. So that's kind of where the fiber comes from and the material comes from. Right now, um, Fiel Robin doesn't get their fabric from North Korea, obviously. They get it from Japan now, and I, I didn't ever hear back from them if they ever sourced it from North Korea, but right now, for sure, all of their fabric comes from Japan. Now let's talk about our sponsor. Contrary to what you might think, most of my time isn't spent tearing things apart. 
most of my time is spent alone late at night working at the shop and building products, designing new products, testing products. And if you're like me, you hate working alone in the dead silence. And Audible offers the perfect solution for that because not only does it help fill the void of loneliness in your shop, but helps keep you entertained, keeps you informed, and helps keep you inspired. And with the Audible app, you can listen any place, anytime, anywhere, whether you're shopping, on your way to work, at work, road trips, alone at your shop at night. <laughs> Basically, anywhere you take your phone, you can listen to Audible. And Audible members get more than ever before. Each month, you can choose one audiobook, regardless of the price as well as two Audible Originals from a fresh selection. Right now, I'm listening to How to Fight a Hydra. It sounds like a fantasy novel, and it kind of is, but it's mostly not. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a parable for business. But if you don't like the audiobook, maybe slaying hydras isn't your thing, you can easily exchange any title if you don't love it at any time. Start listening with your 30-day Audible trial by visiting audible.com slash roseanville or by texting Roseanville to 500-500. Thanks for watching the video and um, stay tuned for the comparison. See ya.